my name is Nuala O'Connor and I'm going to read an extract from a story from my new collection Joyride to Jupiter published by New Island Books. The story is called The Boy from Petropolis and it's about the American writer Elizabeth Bishop. I listen to the waltz of Lotus Heart under my ear, a bump, a bump, a bump. The plump of the years when she might have borne children has fallen away. She is slender now, angular, I have not had a child either, and so between us we own two wasted wombs, a pair of houses built but never occupied. I often wonder who is worse off, a motherless daughter such as me, or the daughter who fails to become a mother, the one who ends the line. Also me. I'm badly off on the double, perhaps. I lift myself off Lota and out of the bed, she will sleep on. The new boy is outside the window when I enter the kitchen. The wheat of his hair is just visible above the sill. I open the back door. We gave you a key, I say. You did not let yourself in. He stares at me and shakes his head. I repeat myself. My Portuguese is not sharp. And he shrugs. The boy is one of those sallow, green-eyed Brazilians, startling to look at. I didn't think anybody outside of fiction had such eyes, but here he is, as green-eyed as a cat. Or something more exotic, an ocelot, maybe. He has Germanic skin, smooth and healthy, the skin of someone who gets fresh air. His name is Tito da Silva, though he has half a dozen other names too, like everyone here. I hand the mop to Tito and he sets off with it, slung rifle-wise over his shoulder. I've no idea where he's going, but I don't call him back or quiz him. He will settle, I think. It won't take long for this one to know what is what around here. I go through to my desk and sit. I poke at one typewriter key and watch its leg kick up and down like a can-can dancer. I look out the window. The milky blue of the sea is my constant distraction and this morning is no different. The water makes me long for the sway of a boat under my legs. Something about Tito has set off a ripple in me, and I already know I won't write a word today. I gaze out the window, my chin cupped in my hand, like a Namoradera statue waiting for her lover. I watch the eddy and gush of the waves. The horizon sits high here, something I mull over often, Lota says it's to do with proximity to the equator, and she's probably right. I imagine fish swishing down from that lofty horizon and crashing onto the shore on their bellies. Shoals of fish, biblical and silver. I imagine myself among them. Madam, you did not give me a bucket. Tito startles me, and when I turn to reprimand him, I see that he looks abashed, so I swallow my annoyance. It's miss, I say, not madam. Please follow me. He trails behind me to the kitchen, head down. I hand him the bucket and he smiles. I sing, there's a hole in the bucket, dear Eliza, dear Eliza. There's a hole in the bucket, dear Eliza, a hole. Tito steps away from me as if stung. It's just a silly old song, I say. He stands, still and contained, looking at me as if indulging the half-mad. Go, I say, go mop. Back at my desk, I watch a lizard skitter down the garden path. It stops and tongues the air. I hope the cat will not saunter by and see it. He wouldn't hurt it, but he likes to paw at lizards, toy with them. I wonder if it's the same lizard that found its way onto our bed last week. It sat a little regent on Lota's pillow. I wanted to screech, but I knew that Lota wouldn't appreciate that, so I squeaked and pointed. Come, friend, she said, and carried the lizard, pillow and all, to the back door and set it free. The lizard ran, jerky and plastic, down the path. I think this lizard may be the same fellow. It certainly looks identical to our bedroom visitor. I watch the lizard's gait along the stones, its purposeful stop and start meander. Tito appears from nowhere, grabs the creature's tail and tosses it over the wall. The lizard hurtles through the air and I gasp, knowing the long drop on the other side, 
anticipating the crush of its body on the paving below. Tito rambles on, sees me in the window and salutes. I return a static wave, then let my hand fall back to my side. The morning has collapsed. I need to get out. I need to walk. There is no sign of the lizard outside the wall. I search up and down and am relieved not to find it. You landed safely, friend, I say. Thank you.